I want to tell you all about my arch enemy. But unlike many superheroes, my nemesis isn't a villain I can have an epic battle with. It's wasted potential. I'm the defender of science, technology, and human life. Today, we're going to investigate the intersection of those three things. We're on the brink of technological advancements that are expected to push human life expectancy to 120 years. With recent breakthroughs in medicine and technology, a researcher in Novato, California says we can easily quadruple this with our current trend. 400 years, you would need superpowers to fit all of those candles on your cake. <laughs> how, how is this possible? The fountain of youth, the philosopher's stone, what if the possibility existed to give the right pharmaceutical or treatment in perfect quantities to the right person exactly when they needed it? Recently, we've put more emphasis on the creation of regulatory and governing organizations like the FDA to make pharmaceuticals and treatments safer for us. These organizations are made to protect us, which make them inherently good in nature. But they're hurting the industries that are making life-saving pharmaceuticals. As a result of increased regulatory expenses, the cost to bring new pharmaceuticals to market increases every year, and they will continue to increase. If Tylenol were invented today, it would cost you nearly $25 for a single pill. Now that headache I gave you doesn't seem that bad, does it? <laughs> so, like every superhero, I have a secret weapon to change the tides of the battle. Two, actually. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. Artificial intelligence, AI, is a series of code that's brilliant at pattern recognition and performing basic functions with those patterns. Think of it like a toddler given a simple two-step task. I tell my son, find a ball and bring it to daddy. Then his brain begins a process. What is a ball? Find a ball. Is this a ball? No. Keep looking. Is this a ball? Yes, great. What was I supposed to do with it again? Right, bring to daddy. Where is daddy? There he is. Toddle over and complete task. AI is no different, except many of the current AIs are being written to market to you more effectively. A programmer writes a series of code that says, when someone looks for an item for sale on this website, follow them around and place ads of that item on their browser. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. You look at that shiny new car once, or that pair of shoes, and that's all you see for days. <laughs> so with, with artificial intelligence, and then machine learning, machine learning gives the AI the ability to teach itself. So now those annoying ads become a little more helpful. So the AI may be able to tell you when you're running low on sugar, or that it was your wife looking at muscle cars, not you. <laughs> I guess I know what to buy her for her next birthday. With great power comes great responsibility. And wouldn't this power be better used to save lives, prevent disease, improve the quality of life? My company is using artificial intelligence and machine learning to bridge the gap between the healthcare industry and the people creating the next greatest treatments. When you reduce the cost of research, instead of focusing on large patient groups, medicine can continue the much needed transition to personalized medicine. This is where I, as a superhero, land the slow motion uppercut to my arch enemy, wasted potential. When, when you reduce the cost of research, instead of focusing on large patient groups, 
medicine can continue the much needed transition to personalized medicine. The trend is already happening with companies sequencing your genome and telling you which drugs will be ineffective or have an adverse reaction. A friend of mine had her daughter's genome sequenced and found she would have an adverse reaction to anesthesia. She would have died on the table for a routine procedure had her mother not told the anesthesiologist of the condition. But because she knew, it had a relatively easy solution. I can't begin to imagine the alternatives. Currently, drugs and pharmaceuticals are one size fits most. And we've accepted the consequences and the side effects that go along with that. A doctor will write you a prescription for a drug that should fix the problem. The chances of having an adverse reaction are statistically insignificant. My son, my wife, my mother and father are anything but insignificant. Isn't one life significant? One adverse reaction? In the very near future, your pharmaceuticals and treatments will be optimized to your genetics, your environment, your drinking water, all the way to the air that you breathe. Personalized medicine and living to 400, sounds good, right? But this conversation wouldn't be, wouldn't be complete without addressing the big question, why now? Because until now, we haven't had a way to store, sort, and secure all of that data. Let me put this into perspective. There are 323 million people in the United States, 7.4 billion in the world. If you were to sequence the world's genome, just their genetics, and store on CDs, it would weigh 122 metric tons. That's the equivalent weight of nearly 300 Airbus A380s, the heaviest jumbo jet in the world. Now have humans store, sort, and secure all of that data. You see the problem, don't you? Humans are bad with data. They're bad with handling data. But computers are really good with it. Now transfer that to our personal medical information. Not to mention, I don't want my neighbor to know everything about me. Not the one who brings over the cup of sugar the internet didn't tell you to buy. The one who plays loud music late into the night and keeps your toddler up. So wouldn't these two superpowers be better used to address those problems? AI not only gives us the power to separate ourselves from that personal identifiable information, encrypting it for security. Its pattern recognition tells us what all of that data means. Are eggs bad for me specifically? An evening glass of wine? The occasional toke of marijuana, a daily aspirin, vaccines, eight cups of water, exercise in the morning versus the evening, red meat, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Point is, no longer will pharmaceuticals and treatments have a one-size-fits-most mentality. No one will need to lose someone they love because of statistical insignificance. For the first time in history, we can take the guesswork out of good health, the practice out of medicine. This is how we will break the two, three, and four century life expectancy barriers, not with a fountain of youth, with knowledge. Artificial intelligence and machine learning give us abilities that you don't need superpowers to take advantage of. Imagine a world where no one dies because of a disease. Where no one 
has an adverse reaction to a pharmaceutical. Where you go to drop your great-great-grandkids off at school before going and running a marathon. If this is a world that you want to live in, it's really simple. Start with getting your genome sequenced. There are many companies that offer the services these, these days. I think it's like 100 bucks or something. And then opt in to the Human Genome Project. Your kids, their kids, and many generations to come may thank you. Even if we don't live forever or leap tall buildings in a single bound, the consequences of your actions will. And one day, those actions may become our philosopher's stone.